today's video, we're going to be building an application on the apps SDK for the very first time. And I've chosen to go with a, an idea that I've been actually toying around with for a while, which is an FPL research agent. So this agent is going to help me prepare my FPL teams. So for those of you who don't know what FPL is, it's a fantasy, uh, league. So for the premier league, there's a fantasy league. So where you get to choose, you know, players every single week and you have to make some predictions about their form, um, injury records that they're going to play and you're trying to gain as many points as possible. So usually the hardest part about it is keeping track of every single thing that is going on with different players across the league. Uh, what games are coming up? Like there's a lot of research that you need to do to be able to predict the best team to get the most points. And this is where I often have no time to do that. So I'm going to be building an assistant that allows me to do that. We're going to be using the apps SDK that was recently released by OpenAI to do this. The apps SDK, for those of you who don't know, makes it much easier for you to serve, not just a connection to an external system to provide text response, but to also provide UI responses. All right. I'm going to show you the app very, very quickly. So the app I have already added, um, as one of my apps is called FBR research buddy. So as you can see here, it's now available for me to have a conversation with. So there are three main things you can do with it. Uh, the first one is just really just kind of getting a list. So typically you might want to find defenders that are under 5 million. So this specific um, request is for me to just go find players that are under 5 million. So here you could see that my tool is asking for this and you could see our tool call right here. So it's position defender max price of five and it's saying that it wants to return a limit of 10. Okay. So this is fine. I'm just going to go ahead and confirm this. And what's going to happen is that it's going to go pull that information. And not only is it going to just return text it's also going to return this UI right here. So this is the UI is returning of all the players that are under um, 5 million or at least some of them. And it's also showing some statistics, you know, the points that they've gotten the form and these types of things. So this is very valuable for me. So I can decide, Oh, I see some players that are of good value and I can, you know, grab them and, and use them in my team. And underneath here, you could also see like the actual data response that ChatGPT is also providing. So this is the typical pattern with these sort of, um, apps is that they provide both a UI and then below that the actual chat GPT response is there. All right. So let's say I want to choose, um, Chris Richards. He's at 4.5 million and I want to see more about him. So I can just say, you know, tell me more about Chris Richards. Now this time around it's going to go return a different type of tool. So this is just looking at one player. So I'm going to go ahead and confirm this. And now it goes to return this player. So this is another component that we're serving up. This is just specifically for one individual player and their statistics, as you can see here. So the three points from 4.2 is owned by 3.1% people. And you can see the information there. Now, what if I wanted to do a comparison of two players? So I can say compare Chris Richards with Michael King. And this time around, you're going to see our comparison tool. So this is for comparing players. So I'm going to confirm that and we're going to see a comparison component uh, pop up. So, yeah. So as you can see, here's the two players that we're comparing and you can see their stats. You can see who's performing better than the other and then you can make um, your decision. So this is the starting point of my app. I'm going to continue to build this app, by the way. I'm just having a lot of fun building this. And this is my very first apps SDK application. So now I'm going to show you exactly how to build something like this. Now I'm going to just kind of walk you through the overview. I'm going to put the actual application inside a GitHub repo so that you can actually access it and play around with it yourself. But I'm just going to show you exactly how to build it. Now, before I show you how to build, I just want to just talk a little bit about how the apps SDK data flow work. So when I sent that message from ChatGPT, it sends that message to an MCP server. So the coolest thing about 
apps SDK. This is really an MCP server. And by the way, if you um, want to learn more about MCP servers, because you absolutely need to know how to build MCP servers to be able to use the apps SDK, go check out my playlist about MCP servers. I'm going to drop it in the link in the description as well. Go check it out where you see how to build MCP servers using fast MCP and how to host them as well, because this is going to be the most critical thing that you do uh, to be able to build these applications. You need to build an MCP server and you need to be able to host it. So basically um, the flow is that ChatGPT starts off the conversation. It goes to your MCP server, your MCP server picks up a tool and that tool returns a response, which goes back to ChatGPT. Now in our case, you can see we have this is basically what we had to do. We created a metadata of for tool discovery, and I'm going to show you a little, little bit about what that code snippet looks like. Uh, we created some FPL logic. So just using a library that just calls the FPL API to get information back, created a few react components. So those components you saw being returned as a response, those are UI components that we've created. Uh, to return back as response. And then finally, we have some MCP server tools. So you can see the three tools that we created. And then the logic is just a search player list. The other one is this. And then you can see like we're just basically returning UI components. So let's look at the code. There's a lot of code. So basically, I'm going to drop it in, in inside the GitHub repo so you could actually go see it. And all the MCP servers that we've built so far are also in that repo. So feel free to go in and use that to learn how to build MCP servers. In the last video about MCP servers, I talked about Smitry as a really good place for you to go host your MCP server. Now you can host it anywhere. I'm going to be hosting mine on Replit. Uh, you could do that as well if you want, or you could just host it inside any uh, cloud provider as well. Okay. So let's jump into the code and see exactly what's going on. So let's take a look at the code. Now, one thing I have to mention is that there's a lot going on in the code. So I'm not going to go over every single piece of code I have written here. I'm just going to give you a sense of what's going on in this project. The project is called FPL Deep Agent. In the project, I do have an MCP server folder, which has a bunch of tools. So these tools are basically calling my FPL utility. So this is just a bunch of functions that are, that are going to be used in the MCP server itself. All right. Then, then we have our web components here. So if you go to the SRC file here, you could see the various UI components we have. This is for player comparison. This is for the player detail you saw earlier on, and this is for the player list. So these are the components that we're serving back as UI components uh, when our MCP server responds. Okay, so next up is the server.py. And this is where all of our MCP server is initialized. And the key things to keep in mind, we're using fast MCP server here. So we're basically pulling in our FPL utilities and everything we're using to call our FPL. We're also pulling in our React bundles. So this is basically our React components and how we're going to be using it. A lot um, regarding the way you build these applications has to do with having very, very clean structures in terms of your outputs. So we have an FPL widget. This is for our UI widget configuration. And we have all these as data classes. So a lot of it is really having these classes uh, put for your input schemas and things of that nature. So this is for input schemas uh, for our MCP server. So this is what it accepts uh, when I ask to show players. It's a query which should go look for, you know, a, pl a particular player name, a position, max price and things of that nature. Okay. So and the same thing goes for these um, others. So show player detail input, compare players input. And this is where we initialize our MCP servers. Here's also where we're listing out our tools because very, very important to list out your tools. This is how OpenAI is going to essentially discover what tools to actually call. So this is a very important function. It's called the list tools function. So this is for discovery. Very, very important as you build out. And uh, we're using resources. And I think resources is one. I haven't really covered resources a lot in the past. We've always looked at tools. We briefly looked at prompts, but resources is playing a big role in the way open AI is using MCP servers. And 
I've not seen anyone really use resources in this particular way, maybe because I haven't kind of had the need to use it, but basically the resources is what's pulling in the UI components. So that's what they've been able to use resources for. You can store different things in there. You could store HTML. It could be react components like we're using. You can store those inside your resources and then use that to serve up, you know, those UI interfaces and that's exactly what they're doing here so here we're listing all the resources that are available so that's that's what this particular one is all about and then as we sort of go down you can start to see um the, the specific tools as well um as we go down you can see all the tools that we've created and finally we're using our streamable http uh, for this so we initialize our stream streamable http and we set up like things like middleware, cores, middleware and stuff like that. Okay, so to run our MCP server, we need to use the UV run Python server that PY is going to be running on port 8000. Now I'm using ngrok as a way to serve this publicly. So for you to test this particular application to see if it's working, you need to serve it publicly. So you need to expose your port to make it available uh, for public usage. So because that's how OpenAI is gonna be able to use the MCP server before you actually deploy it. All right, so to test your app in ChatGPT, what you need to do is to go into your settings, you want to go to apps and connectors and first you need to go to your advanced settings you need to switch this to developer mode so the only way you can actually interact with your apps sdk app currently is in developer mode so you need to set up your developer mode and you can go ahead and now create a new application so you want to give your app a name you want to upload an icon those are optional so but you need to give your app a name so in my case i give it FPL buddy, you want to put in a description and you want to put your MCP server. In this case, this is my ngrok URL. So that becomes your MCP server. Now, if you have authentication in your MCP server, you want to set up your OAuth authentication as well. And then you can go ahead and create. All right. So I've already done this the first time. So I already have my application built out and you can see my url and everything you can see the, the various tools that we have we have a show players tool and in the metadata you could see the the templates for the html which is basically the react components we're talking about and you can see all the tools now if you've made changes to your server and you want to sort of refresh it you can go ahead and refresh right here and that will just basically bring in all the tools that you need to bring in there's also a disconnect if you want to disconnect it you can also delete from here as well so that's exactly how to build an mcp server that can power your chat gpt application I think this is going to open up a lot of opportunities in the way we build apps. This is a new interface. Think about mobile phones. Think about the app store. They have a similar moment here because when you think about the number of people who use ChatGPT and what they use it for, this kind of blends into it. So it's a new surface area. So it's a new opportunity to build. I'm going to be building more MCP servers that solve different problems for myself to start with, and also problems potentially that could be interesting to you. I'm curious to hear what type of problems you like to solve in this particular way, because this is a, one of the most amazing ways to infuse intelligence and visual components that tell a story. I'm looking forward to seeing what you build. Like I said, I'm gonna drop the entire code base in a GitHub repo, so you could go check it out and you can clone it and see how you know, see the pattern and use that pattern to build. I'm going to continue to add to it. So, you know, you can frequently check it out and see what's going on. All right. So there you have it. Uh, we've built our first application. I can't wait to make this application available to everyone. Really, I'm excited about it. I think I have a lot of friends who are going to be excited about it as well. Until next time, do have a great one. Cheers.